Hey everyone, uh, happy new year. Thanks for tuning in. So uh, this video right here that to follow is actually not in Japan. It is in Tequila, Mexico. And uh, so if you have been following us, you know that I have mentioned before that I grew up in Mexico. I'm a uh, Mexican American. I was born in the States, but grew up in the very small town named Quila, which is close to Tequila, probably about an hour and a half away or so by dirt road and whatnot. But I just wanted to share this video because I took it when we went there for my niece's um, wedding and I had the opportunity to tour uh, the town of Tequila where they make the, the alcohol tequila. And we had a very professional tour. The tour guys were actually uh, college graduates with master's degrees in chemical engineering. So they really know their stuff and they did a really good job of explaining uh, the process. And then after that, we went over to the, the top of the hill we had a, a really nice uh, uh, meal uh, overlooking the agave fields. The agave is what is used like the cactus that is used to produce tequila and then after that we went downtown tequila where to the plaza. Uh, plaza in the typical Mexican towns is uh, like the kiosk downtown. Lots of people out and about and this was like on a Wednesday. <laughs> you would think that it was on a weekend when we were there. Lots of people out there, uh, fireworks going off and whatnot, which is very typical in Mexico. And uh, we were on the hunt for some churros, uh, churros. Uh, and churros are, seems to be becoming pretty popular in the States and other places here in Japan as well. But I don't care if you get them from Starbucks or wherever, food food place. Um, you have not had churros, churros, I should say correctly, um, until you had the, the street made where they were literally set up a little, they set up there in the afternoon and the evening and they will uh, deep fry it right there on the street until they run out. Uh, so yeah, please enjoy the video. Uh, however, the uh, audio was not the best during the, the um, presentation because of the distance. That I was standing from them but um, hopefully you get something out of it so uh, again <laughs> this is not uh, Japan I actually even though I am in Japan right now in our beautiful home in the countryside uh, but you know if you have again if you have been following us we'd like to travel as well so we like to cover other topics uh, not just the uh, living in rural Japan and this IKEA renovation or vacant house renovation uh, which we are now living in all right folks if you like what you see, please hit subscribe, like, and share, and uh, keep following us along. All right, folks, so we are on a trip to Tequila, so we're gonna go ahead and tour a couple of distilleries. And uh, we actually got a uh, like a uh, rental tour where we're gonna make a stop here and eat some breakfast, and then this is gonna be lunch and music and some tequila sampling and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, come along and check it out. So we should be getting ready to uh, do a tour here at this distillery. Uh, looking forward to a couple samples of tequila. And we had a couple of these Sprinter vans that brought us over from Guadalajara City to tequila, which is about 45 minutes. Do you want here? Where is it? Okay, so um, I'm Andy. Okay. And this is Pedro. So during the stay here at the distillery, you will be with us for the process and also the tasting. Oops. We're going to try our best so you can learn the whole thing about the process, the, um, this distillery. And we want to tell you that um, both Pedro and me, we are maestros tequileros. Okay? So you are in the best hands uh, with experts. Okay? So I'm a chemical engineer. Um, and then I did a, a master's program. That's um, where Giancarlo, Jessica, the other guys as well. We started a two-year program, which is called Industrial Tequila Process. I used to be biotechnology engineering, 
I used to do the master's degree too and I am familiar too from wines, beers, distilled drinks, cigars, waters and olive oils. So we are an experts in this field. If you have questions, please ask to us. We know we can answer your questions. Is there any tequila that does not get any hangovers? Yes. <laughs> yeah. you, you will see and we are how and why. I so I'm going to um, explain sort of the, the basic of the agave, okay, the, which is the raw material, the plant that is used to, to produce tequila. What, what is a little bit about the definition? Are you, I don't know if you heard ever of uh, protected denomination of origin, like some cheeses or wines that they have something like that. And the first part of the process, which is cooking the agave, you know, roasting this plant and extracting the juice. So, have you ever heard of other agave spirits different from tequila? Mezcal. Mezcal, okay, yeah, that's another one. So saying agave spirit, it's just referring to an alcohol that you got after using a, an agave plant. So what makes tequila special or what is defined as tequila? We have uh, something that is called protected denomination of origin. The most famous one in the world, I would say, is Champagne. Okay? So we have this tiny town in France called Champagne, and the wine that is produced there can be called like that. But if you produce it outside of, of that town, it has a different name. Tequila uh, has a, a denomination of origin as well, and it was the first Mexican product to ever get one. So that meant that in 1972, Te the word tequila became something protected. So tequila, it is an agave spirit from a specifically and only blue agave. Or the full scientific name is agave tequilana beva blue bayeri. So we just call it blue agave. Blue agave is one out of 300 different species of agaves. From all these agaves, okay, you can only use one. Uh, that's the first condition. The second condition is what is the region, what is the area where you are going to produce tequila. And that is the state of Jalisco, where we are right now, the whole Jalisco, and little parts of Nayarit, of Michoacán, Guanajuato, and Tamaulipas. So we have the plant, the blue agave. It's a succulent plant. So have, I don't know if you saw, there's a bunch of agave fields that you can see. It's a crop that is, you could say that it's easy and not expensive because it doesn't need to be watered. You just plant it, direct sunlight, only the little rain that it gets, and that's it. What is the complex thing about the agave? That we have to wait a long time. The mature age of, of blue agave, it's at seven years. Well, that's ideal, right? But some distilleries that produce not that high quality tequila use younger agave. This distillery where we are right now, it's called Cava de Oro. It's only 23 years old and it's owned by a woman. Okay? So Leticia Hermosillo started all this distillery. She had agave, agave fields before. She was a, what we call agavera. So we have the agaveras and the agaveros, the people that own the agave and sell it. But at a point she decided, okay, I think it's smarter to just use my own agave to produce tequila. So we have all that agave. It's seven years old. It's fully mature, ready to get harvested. Would you say, what do you think we use a machine or only people? People. People. They're called gimadores. So the amount of agave that gets harvested daily is huge. And it's all done by people, it's all done by the quimadores. And they use this special tool. This is called the COA, C-O-A. Okay, so we have the leaves, okay? Those are the pencas, so this will be a piece of it, right? So we have to shave the agave, and that's why they use this tool. Well, you can go can here and try. Fly? Yes? Yeah. 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 No, that's the right way. <laughs> so they, they, they would normally carry a, a file to, to sharpen it every time they, they cut it. Yeah. Uh -oh. Don't take too much off. Contratado. 
Ahora la foto. So the point is to shave the whole thing so we can get a bowl that we call piña, like pineapple. We have two ovens, right? We have those two ovens and this is the crushing uh, stone. So we have the piña, we have the agave that arrives at the distillery and we are going to start the process. We need five steps, okay? We have the preparation of the sugar, in this case, roasting the agave. We have to cook agave first. Then we need to extract the juices. We need to ferment the juices, distill them, and then optional is aging them in barrels. Okay? So why is the cooking the first process and the most important one? Because that is when you are going to turn the complex sugars that are in the piña, in the agave, into a sweet sugar. And in the old days, which is still used for a, uh, some mezcal, it's cooking the agave on the ground. But people in this area wanted to make tequila in a more industrial way. They need it faster and more efficient. So they started using ovens. You, you have two types of ovens, brick ovens or a stainless steel autoclaves like this one. Okay. In a brick oven, you're going to steam the agave. You will use the steam to slowly cook the agave. And in this, we get, it's like a pressure cooker. It's literally a pressure cooker. So brick oven takes a long time, two or three days. And a pressure cooker, an autoclave, needs a couple hours. Once the agave is cooked, it goes from white to brown. So you have to cook the agave in a way that you are slowly breaking down complex sugars into simple sugars and a little bit of caramel. And that's going to turn the agave into something sweet and uh, soft. Okay. Then we are going to extract that juice and separate the fiber and the juice. You can see that in here we have some leftover fibers that look like little hairs. Okay. But the point of this rock is to spin around, crush the cooked agave, and all the juice is going to go down the drain that we have in the middle. Years back, they would use a donkey or a horse. Now we have a motor, right? So out of the whole sugars that we have in the, in the cooked agave, only 70% are extracted this way. You are wasting a lot, but you get a lot of mineral taste. If we measure diameter of this, and we come back in 10 years and we measure again, it's going to be slightly slimmer, maybe half centimeter. But that half centimeter of the rock grounded itself while crushing the agave. So a tequila that is produced using a taona is always going to have a bit more complexity and the lingering taste in your mouth. So when you, when you have the tasting, you are going to try two blancos one that used this and the other one that didn't use that more industrial process you're going to see one lingers in your mouth and the other one fades quicker the this distillery produces 500,000 um, liters per year and only 10 percent of that volume is produced in this way okay so this is the more crafted, more time consuming, less efficient and the more expensive one. And more expensive yeah. at the end, of course. Right? So so far we've covered how do we treat the agave in the fields, the cooking that can be done in this or the brick oven, and the extraction of the juice. Okay? Right now we're going to we're going down okay, to enter the fermentation and distillation. So after we make tequila over there, tequila have two options. The first option is put inside the bottle and sell it. And the second option is put inside the cask or a barrel as you want to call it and make the aging process. There exists five different classes of tequila and one subclass. The first class of the tequila we know as blanco, plata or silver. Then we have tequila reposado or aged tequila. 
tequila reposado is a tequila that was aged minimum two months or a longer time. Then we have tequila añejo or extra aged tequila. Tequila añejo, añejo, it's a tequila that was aged for minimum one year or a longer time. Then we have tequila extra añejo or ultra aged tequila. Tequila extra añejo, it's a tequila that was inside the barrel minimum three years or a longer time. And the fifth class is tequila joven or tequila oro, the gold tequila. The gold tequila is a mix between a silver tequila and another aged tequila. And we have a subclass of tequila. The subclass of tequila nowadays are the most popular and the best seller around the world. They are the cristalinos. The cristalinos are the best seller because they are the easier tequila to drink, are super smooth, super soft tequila. These tequilas can be blanco, reposados, añejo, or extrañejo, but when they finish the time inside the barrel and we take it out, we filter with activated charcoal filters that are going to remove the color, change the flavor, the scents, and make it smoother. So the wood that we are able to use for tequila, the rule says that we are able to use cedar or oak. And we usually use two different types of oaks, American white oak and French oak. All right, so after that awesome tour there in tequila, so now we're here over here for a uh, quick dinner at La Palapa. And it's a beautiful view of the whole tequila area, all the agave. All this is agave, what they're talking about. It takes seven years to be able to start uh, using that for some good tequila. Welcome to Mexico. Yes. <laughs> uh, folks, this is Mexico. This is not Puerto Vallarta, Cancun. This is what it's all about. To include the stray dogs. Oh, they're selling little crickets. Do you want some crickets? Man, I don't know about these crickets. Yeah, so this is typical in Mexico in the evenings. Everyone comes out and enjoys the nice weather, uh, family time, get some snacks, some tacos, uh, all kinds of stuff. And this being the town of tequila, so of course, lots of tequila. Andamos buscando churros. gracias. So we are looking for some churros. You've never had churros unless you've had the street churros and hopefully we can find some. Oh, it looks like we might have found some. There are the churros, so they're made on the street, out here on the street. Uh, the batter, deep fried. Como decía, Nos encontramos. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's an old Mexican joke. Rolling barrel. <laughs> 